key words are, he said, we need a little bit of time. Well, I'm, I'm more good. of a trader than an investor. Okay. I've got some investments, absolutely. But um, I don't know why I have to position in GE right now. These guys, when you look at the cash burn, it's going to be unbelievable in just about every category that they've got. They still have the debt issues. He talked about that and how they got to address that. He's doing a great job, I think, in terms of is he cleaning up GE? He absolutely is. Is he trying to get that balance sheet together? He absolutely is. I think this thing's going to take some time. So if you're buying it right now at 1030, if you really are going to say I'm long term, just put that thing away and let's see where it is in two years. Otherwise, you might be pretty angry in a couple months from now if it's trading back towards eight, which is what I think we're, we're hearing from Tusa. He's still sticking with a six dollar price target. And let's be honest, he's been right more more than wrong than more so than anybody. I hear you, Pete. Um, you don't want to wait around for this. But when the guy tells you that we could be free cash flow positive on our industrial business in 2020, the market price is that in now. And, and, and I think we still have to you know, follow through and see what's going on there. But when you layer in the web tech sell off, uh, the fact that matters, Baker Hughes is hanging in there, picking up value every day on some of the parts. Um, I, I think, look, Larry Culp has moved a lot faster than anybody thought he would. And in fact, what he just said, that was as confident as I've heard a GE chairman and a long, CEO in a long time. And I think his last statement two weeks ago, before then we got the interim statement that seemed muddled and confusing, was also very confident, talking about the div coming back at some point. That sends a message of stability. That's what people want with GE. Free cash flow positive for the industrials, which I think they were in 2018. Obviously, 19 is a disaster. So they're just getting back to where they were, which, which is fair. And I do think he's making great strides. But to Pete's point, the J.P. Morgan analyst has been steadfast in his belief that we go back and see six bucks. If you believe, Mr. Culp, if you absolutely believe that in 2020, 2021, that's where the company's gonna be, it's probably, and Tim would agree, this is probably an 18 to $20 stock, if you believe everything he said. Do you believe everything I don't. he says? I, not that he's lying, I just right, don't right. think they get there. So I think it, I do think it retests levels we saw a few months ago. They sell this life science business, the stock gaps up, it's trading $12.5, people couldn't sell it fast enough. I mean, like, you, know, you know, it was just kind of interesting and it gave back it all doubled, the gains. No, I, I understand, I but what I'm saying, on that gap, it, it did, it was up 20% in the pre-market or something like that, it opened up there, and then it sold off 25% over the next week or so. So, I, I mean, listen, I do think that there's probably more news headlines, I think you sell the news headlines and you look for an opportunity when there's a bad news headline to get back in. So we're in the single digits.